Praise the Lord. Can we be on our feet as we begin to worship our Lord and our God? Let's just lift up our soul to the one who has graced us for the supernatural. The one who has given us what we do not deserve. The reason you have the breath of life in you. The one that saw you when no one else saw you. The one that understand how you became a living soul from the womb of your mother. Why don't you just appreciate the one you came from, the one you will return to. Lift up your soul and exalt the Alpha and the Omega. The glorious Father. Just worship Him. You are Alpha and Omega. We Worship him and give him all the glory. He's the Alpha and the Omega. The shepherd of your soul. The eyes that watches over you. The hand that keeps you. The pillar that holds your life. Father Lord, we worship you. We exalt you. We bow before your majesty. Holy are you, O Lord. Worthy are you, O Lord. Gracious are you, O Lord. Father, we bow before your mighty presence. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. Our Father and our God, behold your children. We have come to you to drink from this fountain, Lord, that it fill up. Fill us, fill us up till we want no more. That the one thing we earnestly ask of you is that this grace you have given us will not be in vain. Lord, that the death on the cross of Calvary we avail for us. It won't be in vain in any life gathered here, Lord. It won't be in vain in any life connected to this altar. Lord, speak to us, O oh Lord. Minister to our souls, O oh Lord. Let your word come sharp into our being, O oh Lord. And let us live here renewed and refreshed in your presence. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome to church. This month has been themed, graced for the supernatural. And um, we have been so blessed by various messages, so much deep exposition of the word, grace and the supernatural. And today, the Lord wants us to take something very tangible. And so the topic for today is do not frustrate the grace of God. It's two sentences. The first one is do not frustrate the grace of God. The second one, do not take this grace for granted. And I pray that the Lord himself will teach us in the name of Jesus. Just as a way of recap, when we talk of the natural man, the natural man is born with the nature of sin, the Adamic nature. A natural man is born with the limitations of the Adamic nature. A natural man is born separated from God. And then there is the supernatural. And the supernatural comes from just one source. And it comes from the supernatural God. It is another realm of existence that does not operate under the limitations and the nature of the natural man or the natural realm. Praise the Lord. The supernatural is beyond natural, just as the word connotes. It's above the things that nature supports. So if we want to live in the supernatural and enjoy the grace of the supernatural, we have to operate in the supernatural. Praise the Lord. Now, what is this grace that we have been talking about? This grace is the favor, unmerited, undeserved favor that the almighty God has given to humanity by giving us Jesus. He gave us Jesus. That's why Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 tells us that what? By grace are ye saved. That's the simple and honest truth. We are saved by the grace of God through Christ that died as an atonement for you and I. Now, some years ago, I was talking with someone who does not uh, believe in Christ. And he was telling me that it doesn't make sense to him that somebody died for him. And I think the natural mind can reason in that direction. So it takes the supernatural ability of God for you to reason and understand that by Christ dying, he actually paid the price for your salvation. Hallelujah. Now that we have received this grace by being born again, being, you know, um, readmitted into the presence of God by the blood of the Lamb, through this grace, and I say to you, the Spirit of God says to you, do not take this grace for granted. I want us to read Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 to 21. Can we have it? Galatians 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ died in vain. Let's also go to Romans chapter 6, we read verse 1 and 2. Romans 6, verse 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer, dearing? 
Praise the Lord. Now back to our salvation. How did we get saved? We heard the word. We believed in our hearts. We confessed with our mouth. And we become the children of God. It sounds really simple. It's simple. But with deep spiritual meaning. And because it sounds and looks so simple. Many have taken this grace for granted. And that is why you have some school of thought that we call the grace preachers. And they will tell you that the grace of God is more than sufficient. That once you are born again, that's what the Bible says. That once I come out and I accept Jesus as my Lord and my personal Savior, I am born again. This is what happens. At that point, you took that decision that you want to serve God. And you come out or you stay wherever you are and accept Jesus in your heart and confess him. Spiritually, there is a rebirth that happened. A new spirit came upon you, and that is the spirit of God that came into your heart. But do you know what? Look at yourself. Did you change? Your physical man, did he change? I'm asking, did anything happen to your physical man? Did anything happen to your mind? The only thing that happened was a spiritual rebirth. And I call that spiritual rebirth the first order condition, which is the grace we are talking about. That is the main thing that has happened. Jesus has died. And you have been called to enjoy the death of Jesus. You have come in. Now, what does it really mean to believe in Jesus? Is it just that head acceptance that Jesus is the son of God? Is that what it means to believe in Jesus? Let's check the Bible. John chapter 12 verse 49. Sorry, 46. John 12 46. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. This is what it means to believe in Jesus. To believe in Jesus is not to abide in darkness. It's not to take the grace of God and say, oh, Jesus has died. Ah, uh, Apostle Paul said it. Oh, Romans said it. It is the gift of God. Yes, it is the gift of God. Yet you are not to frustrate that gift of God. And I want to ask you a question. Do you think that grace has no expiration date? I'm asking you, do you think that this grace and the message of God has no expiration? I want to tell you, I want to announce to you, it expires the day the breath of life is taken from you. And the spirit of God in you goes back to God. And your soul will stand to give account of the life that you have lived while you were in your flesh. No matter what you choose to believe, there is a process. And what even gave us this process is the grace from the cross of Calvary. If not, there will be no way at all. Under the law, there was multiple killing of animals and atonement and atonement and atonement. And it wasn't sufficient. And Jesus had to come to give us a platform to come back to our Father. But on this platform, there are requirements. Praise the Lord. Now, the second order condition, after Christ has paid this price, and we believing in Christ is for us to live in obedience of Christ. There is something we need to do. It is called the renewing of the mind. When you get born again, your mind doesn't get renewed. You renew it yourself. You make a conscious effort. To train your heart and your mind to be towards God. You have to make up your mind that you will no longer conform to the standard and the ways of the natural man. You have to repent from dead works. They are listed in Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21. Let's just look at it. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Now, the works of the flesh are made manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envying, murder, 
drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I also told you in time past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And somebody may argue, but they said it is not by works, it is grace. The grace is the platform that you can just confess Jesus and he comes into your life. And then the spirit comes upon you. That spirit is the Holy Spirit and it is a sensor. It is a sensor such that it tells you when you are going the right direction and when you are not. And the day you die in the spirit is the day that you are comfortable in unrighteousness. Just know that you are dead in the spirit. You have lost the salvation. Some started as Christians, but now they are churchgoers. Where are you? Are you still a Christian or are you a churchgoer? Have you embraced the doctrine, false doctrine, that the grace of Christ Jesus saved you and that is it? And they will argue with you that is there any way that he that is saved become unsaved? Excuse me, Jesus saved here. The gospel tells us that they who do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I pray that the Lord himself will teach us in the name of Jesus. Part of the second order condition is that you be led by the Spirit of God because Galatians 5.16 says what? What does it say? Can we look at it? For us to be the children of God, we have to be led by the Spirit of God. Galatians 5.16. This I say, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the counsel of the flesh. You walk in the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God leads you. He talks to you every day. He reminds you of those things, those paths that will lead you to the eternal life. That's paths that will help you to dwell in the realm of the supernatural. Please do not forget that this grace will expire the day you are gone. There will be no second chance. There will be no second chance. Now, to live and enjoy this grace for the supernatural, which you have received at the point of Jesus died for you. You have been given that enablement. The first thing you need to do is to live a godly life. Now, 1 Peter 1, 16 says something. He said, be ye holy as I am holy. If it was not possible, he won't tell you that. If he didn't give you the grace to live that life, he won't tell you to live that life. He has given you that enablement and empowerment to live like your father. Praise the Lord. You have also been graced and given the ability to live above the issues of life. The limitations that limit the natural man. You have that capacity. You have that ability right within you to live above the troubles of this present world. How? But there are problems. Some are sick in their body. Some can move forward. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. This was Apostle Paul's experience. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Before this verse, we don't have time to read the preceding verses. Actually, Paul had a thorn on his flesh. And he went to God three times, take this stone away, like maybe a sickness, maybe a health issue. God, take this thing away from me. And God told him, my grace is sufficient for you. And I tell you, wherever you find yourself in this journey called life, and you are a child of God, the grace of God is sufficient for you. For in that trouble, in that challenge, his grace is sufficient. You have the ability and the capability to walk through and come out successfully. Only remember to rely on your maker. He never made us to be sufficient on our own. And some of those thorns are to remind you that you can't make it on your own. Because it's easy for men to take things for granted. Praise the Lord. I pray that the Lord will expound his words in our hearts in Jesus' name. Purge your life of spiritual junks. Do all you can to remain connected to your source of grace. What are spiritual junks? Yesterday, uh, if we went through the open heaven, our daddy in the Lord, our daddy Gio was telling us something about the things that we watch, the television, we watch 
social media, that one is even worse than television. You know? The things we listen to, the movies you go to see. You know, I will even see the, what do, is it, what do they call, is it the adverts? And I will see the images that these people are projecting. What exactly is wrong with us as Christians? Do we not know who we are? Why is it that the line between Christians and non-Christians is getting thinner and thinner every day? Why do we not know who we are? Whatever the word brings up, we collect from them. We don't know the source of these things. We don't know the spirit behind these things. And we consume them and say that the grace of God will be sufficient. No. No. God is God. He will not change because your time changed. He's not going to lower his standard for anybody. No, he will not. I pray that this grace that we received, we will not cry in eternity. The Lord will help you and I in Jesus' name. Make up your mind that this grace will not be in vain in your life. This is a personal decision. This is a personal decision. Every day, Mirror your life. Weigh your life. The things you follow. Let me tell you something. The devil tried to stop the gospel from spreading. He failed. The word of God continued to go to nations of the world. And he will come up with another strategy. Okay, let's leave them. Let them go. But we are going to put a lot of junks around them. And they will be carried away with those drums, and they will forget who they are. And that is the story of the Christian of today. Mind what you consume, I tell you. Mind the things you listen to. Who among us have seen our soul before? You have not seen your soul before, but you know you have a soul. What is the channel to your soul? Your body senses. That is the channel to your spirit man. So the things you let your eyes see, the things you let your ear listen to, the things and the people and the association and the conversations you allow to happen around you will pollute your spirit man. And we pull down your spiritual energy. We, you know battery? Let me use the, the phone battery for example. You can charge your phone for 30 minutes to one hour and you have it fully charged. If you put on something, maybe you're watching a video or you put on something that will consume that battery, your phone battery will just go down within a few minutes. Or well, let me say, maybe less than 30 minutes, your phone is down again. But if you use that phone well, you know that you can go with that battery for the rest of the day. Now, when you come to the presence of God, your, spirit, your, your spiritual battery is charged up. But one singular thing you do will just kill that thing. All that you took your time. Opening up yourself to the channels of your spirit. Open up. And the Spirit of God will come. When you say, call upon me, and I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. But when I show you, will you accept it? Will you accept it? So many times the Holy Spirit is nudging us. You are somewhere the Holy Spirit tells you you shouldn't be here. You are doing something the Holy Spirit tells you you shouldn't do this. You believe you've been saved by grace, not of works. It's not of works. It's not by keeping the law. But you need to accept this grace and live by this grace and not frustrate this grace and not take this grace for granted. And the Lord himself will help us in the name of Jesus. Now, invest in yourself and have an unquenchable appetite for the power of God. That is how to operate in the supernatural. It is the power of God that breaks the limit between natural and supernatural. You want to operate in that realm. Like I said in the beginning, a natural man cannot please God. A natural man cannot live holy. A natural man cannot do these things. They are hard. They are impossible. That's why you see people who, you know, they will make resolutions and they will go back to those resolutions. But when you connect yourself to the living God and allow your battery to be, you know, fully charged every time, be conscious of who you are. Live in that consciousness. Live your life like a man that is putting on a white garment. Because when all is done and said, 
when all is said and done, I'm sorry, in the final analysis, you don't have anyone to call upon. You'll be all by yourself, I promise you that. All those people that gave you comfort, that you try to please, you try to align to the way that they have defined beauty and life, all those standards will not be there to speak for you. And in that realm, there is no argument. There is no argument. The life you have lived in your flesh will determine where you will spend eternity. Not just because you accepted that Jesus died for you. Accepting him is wonderful, but living by his own standard is a sufficient condition. Do you want us to pray? This is what the Holy Spirit has for us this morning. This is what the Lord is speaking to us. I want you to just go to God in genuine repentance. If you need to rededicate your life, please do that. All the junks in your life, make up your mind that you're dropping them today at this altar. All those things you chase after, this one is out, you're going there. This one is happening. Today I defy you, today I help you. Today increase your strength or drain your battery. Drop them before the Lord. The Holy Spirit is nudging you again. Ah, don't let this voice ring against you in eternity. Nothing else will matter when you will stand before your maker. Just say, the Lord, I come to you in the humility of my life and my heart. Help me. Help me, Lord. I drop these things. Make those decisions. Make those decisions. If you have not given your life to Christ at all, please, this is another opportunity for you to say, Lord Jesus, please come into my life. Become my Lord and my personal Savior. Help me in the name of Jesus. Help me to serve you. Help me to be for you forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And I want us to just be on our feet. just want us to go to our Father and tell him, I have no other God but you. I have no other Father but you. Today, Lord, I ask of you, help me that I will never take this grace for granted. And I will not frustrate your grace upon my life. You have invested so much in me. I know, I see it, I know it. Lord, May it not be in vain. When the road shall be called yonder, Lord, let me be in the number. Let it not be that I wasted my time. Lord, help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And let somebody shout hallelujah. I believe you can do better than that. I believe you can see do better than that. Thank you, Jesus. We we'll, we'll bless the Lord for how he has ministered to us this morning. The Lord has again reminded us of those things that are important. And I pray the woman of God, everyone is very happy and pleased with you. And I pray that the pleasure of God it will continue to multiply in your hand in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's press for our hand to the woman of God, the pastor. Say, Father, thank you for your grace upon our life. Lord, multiply your grace upon us. We ask the abundance of your grace. Let's pray that those heaven is pleased with her, that the pleasure of God will continue to flourish in our hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Father, we thank you for this daughter of Zion. Thank you for your grace upon her life. Thank you all for how you have used her again to bring our mind back to things that are important. That we will not, we do, we must not forsake, we must not frustrate the grace of God. That we cannot afford to take it for granted. Say, Father, I commit your servant into your hand. Lord, let your pleasures continue to flourish in our hand. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And you are going to pray for yourself. Say, Father, I've heard your word today. This word will not stand against me in the last day. That the God will say, but you heard it. I told you, I want you. That you cannot afford to take the grace of God for granted.
but you didn't listen. Say that will not be the voice that you hear. Say this word that you have heard today, that word will not condemn you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you have asked for help to walk in a way that will not frustrate the grace of God upon our life. Say, Father, Lord God, Lord, release that help upon me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let's pray for our pastor. Our pastor is on official duty to Ontario. Let's commit him into the hand of God. Say, Father, we pray for your servant. Lord, let your hand continue to be upon him, continue to strengthen and uphold him, and bring him back safely. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let's let's pray for our pastor and our, our, our provincial pastor and our provincial pastor, Mrs. Let's commit them into the hand of God. Say, Father, let your grace continually be multiplied upon them, that the pleasure of God will continue to flourish in their hands too. In the mighty name of Jesus, will you commit the weak into the hand of God and say, Father, as I go this week, Father, go with me in the name of Jesus. Let your presence go with me. Lord, as I go this week, I will not take your grace for granted. Lord, as I go this week, Lord, I will not frustrate the grace of God upon my life. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let's talk, let's commit the wicked to the hand of God. Say, Father, as you are going, Lord, go with us, O Lord. Lead and guide us. Order our step from above. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anywhere I will go this week that will frustrate the grace of God. Lord, O Lord, I pray I will not go there. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's commit the wicked to the hand of God. Let's ask God for divine protection over us as we go this week. Say, Father, let your protection be sure and mighty over me. Be with me, guide me. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, establish me in righteousness. Even as you are praying this morning, in Jesus' mighty name, let's commit our heart desires unto him. What are you trusting God for this week? Let's say, Father, Lord, I'm believing you for this miracle. He said, call upon me, I will answer you, and I will show you greater and mighty as you know. No. Let's begin to commit our request as a wrap up. Say, Father, Lord Jesus, these are my desires this week. And above all, you must have the desire this week and going forward, never again to, to, to frustrate the grace of God or to take the grace of God for granted. Many of us are doing it all the time. We say grace will cover it. Grace, grace will cover it. Grace does not cover my sin. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I receive fresh power. I receive help from above as I go this week. Never again in my life going forward to frustrate your grace or to take your grace for granted. Thank you, mighty God, because you answer our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Everlasting Father, we are grateful unto you for the way you have spoken unto us. To keep us in remembrance of those things that Holy Spirit has been warning us every day in our closet. Lord, we are grateful for the truth of your word that came unto us. Let your name alone be exalted in Jesus' name. I will pray for your vessel. I pray, Lord, that your pleasure will continue to flourish in our hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Both the, the, the one you have used and those of us who have had the message, I pray the word will not stand against us on the last day in Jesus' name. As you go this week, may the Lord go with you. That you come back next Sunday with testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy of the Lord shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. By the grace of God, our pastor will be with us next, next week. He's on ministry assignment this weekend. So pray for him. The Lord will bring him back safely in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a glorious week.